Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, we're finally going to get around to doing char cloth. The only thing I've done differently, see I picked up that Luxada stove, is I poked a, just a little hole in here. You don't necessarily need them in, if you don't have an airtight fit. And the smoke would have just come around the sides. But the advantage of a hole in this from what I've been watching is uh, when the smoke comes out, if you're around a fire and stuff, or if you've got a, um, a match, you know, a little reach in there and light it, you can light the smoke coming out, and it's burning out the impurities. And I've got a mixture in here. Now, for char cloth material, you want to use, like, thick cotton. The thicker, the better. Like, this is almost like burlap. But this is a couple of gun cleaning patches in here. And then this is a shop rag. Just an old shop rag that I cut up into pieces and put it here. You don't want to pack them down, you know, like really smash it in there a lot. This is going to come out pretty fragile when it's finished. Kind of like an ash, almost like an ash. And yeah, that's what I used. You can also use like an old towel, t-shirts, stuff like that. But the thinner the material you get, the more fragile the stuff gets. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the, on the uh, thing on the fireplace... I, if you're going to do this, I'd recommend it doing it either outside or in a fireplace or something that will handle the smoke. Because there's going to be smoke coming off. And it's like these rags, man. I used to get these from uh, Ratco. You know, we worked on oily metal parts and stuff like that. And so you always needed a rag to clean your hands off or you know, all that stuff. Anyways, when these came back, even when they're clean they still had a chemical smell to them so it's going to burn off all the impurities and this is going to basically wind up black when it's finished so let's get to the process now i won't be showing the whole you know burning through process because it's going to take about anywhere you know like 10 15 minutes this thing running before it's finished and you basically run it until there's no more smoke coming out and then you turn it off and let it cool and then when you open up you should have char cloth so we'll see. Alrighty, here we go. Let's get this fire going. Well, first I gotta get the fire going. Mm. I'm about there. You don't have to have it super jet fast. I mean, you, I guess the quicker you get it done. Oh, crap -o. Yeah, well, there's the first mistake. All right, there we go. Now you can see a little bit of smoke coming off the top. That's where some people light that, just to cut down the smoke. But you can see it's all going out the chimney. Ow. Play with fire, you're going to get burned. That's when it's good to have one of those uh, long reach sparkers, you know, like barbecue lighters, but I don't have one of those, so. Let's see all that. If I wouldn't have cut that hole in there, this pressure might have built up enough to try to pop the lid off, and then it would ruin it, because to make charcoal, to make a fire, you need heat, fuel, and oxygen. And what we're trying to do is not give it any oxygen but really crank up the heat and what that does is it basically turns it into like charcoal they call it char cloth but if you like this thing it'll give you an idea oh well that was a 
scrappy match. I need one of those storm proof and now now it's really coming out see that Jet it's not lighting on its own oh there it goes on the side pretty cool huh Fire, fire, fire. Now see if you'd have been in a, if you'd have put this in the coals of a campfire, the regular frame around there would have ignited your little exhaust port. I didn't even time this. I don't know how long it's going to take. You basically just keep cooking this until it stops producing smoke or flame. And then you got to remember it's hot, so don't grab it with your hands. Grab it with a glove or some tongs. All right, straighten up camera. Get up here. There we go. Sorry. Trying to adjust this. It's windy outside, that's part of the sound you hear. Straighten the camera up. Watch it burn. Alright, so I'll come back to this when it's almost done. So the side flame's gone out. And uh, I tried to light it with a big lighter, stuff like that, and it won't. Like I said, you need a barbecue torch thing, but I can tell. I mean, I'll be able to tell when it's uh, run out of fuel. Burned everything out. There you go, I got it lit. I had to use my uh, Zippo with a blowtorch. But that's your like your little pilot light you know it kind of gives you an indicator of uh if there's anything in it now one guy i watched when he was finished he uh when the light went out he took the box and he shook it and then he put it back on there and he tried to light it again and stuff like that we're not going to go through all that i mean when it's when that goes out i'm gonna let it go for like another minute or so and then, then I'm going to turn it off. But yeah, there's your little burn indicator. See now, you, it's not smoking near as much now. So, it's getting further along in the process. If you open it too soon, like if you don't let it cool off, it's still got enough heat in there. This stuff is really highly combustible you know it's basically just waiting for heat and oxygen well there's already heat there so if you open it up it could basically turn it into ash pretty quick we don't want to do that not yet one of the uh, videos i was watching the guy was saying this is stuff that you um make at home and take with you you usually don't carry an empty container just to make char cloth in you know you either use a uh, stuff called like punk wood or uh, charcoal from a pre-existing fire or natural materials you know there's some fungus and inside of uh, soft dead wood stuff like that so yeah it's still going like I said this thing from all I've seen that usually takes about 15 minutes um, before all the impurities burn out. That's without the camera light on. It's still going. Alright, I just ran into an issue. 
that you probably wouldn't run into outdoors or anywhere else. And that was, <clears throat> as I was running this stove on this um, propane, butane canister, the sound changed on the jet. The flame started getting higher. And so I started turning down the, the flame. Still uh, wasn't finished yet. But because this is such a, a huge radiator, you had all this all this metal sitting on top of the stove transferring that heat. So I'm switching to an alcohol stove, which is a little bit less dangerous. I'm just trying to put it on this. There we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the process with this uh alcohol stove <clears throat> because pressurized containers man that, and that could easily turn into a boom and it doesn't look like much you know you're like ah, that's not much if that sucker were to rupture because all that heat was reflecting down on top of this so I, th I think it was pressurizing this tank more than it should i don't know anyways these things are usually not cooking at high temperature for a long long time when they even tell you on big lighters don't hold it for, you know for much more than 30 seconds uh so anyways just to be on the safe side i'm switching to this so <clears throat> and again that's not anything that you would run into it's going to take it a while to get back up to temperature and everything before i can even get something to come out of there I think we're probably maybe uh, four or five minutes away from completion of this operation, but safety is our number one priority. <clears throat> so, yeah, because indoors, man, like I said, outdoors, the wind would be blowing or something, and uh, you wouldn't have this issue, I don't think, but you really wouldn't be making charcoal off outdoors, you know? So just be aware of that anytime you're running a uh, one of these type of containers that uh, if you hear the pressure starting to change where it starts to get faster and everything I felt down here and this sucker was hot I mean it wasn't like super hot it was hot to the touch so anyway like I said better safe than sorry Alcohol doesn't burn as high as the temperature and doesn't have that pressurized effect. But once it heats it up, it should work just as well. Also, if you're doing this in a kitchen or anything, just be aware <clears throat> that uh, not all stove kitchen hoods are vented outside. They should be, but <clears throat> like in mine right over the it's right over the uh, stove you know there's a microwave with a built-in vent at the bottom of it well that vent doesn't hook up to anything so it's basically just filtering it all right see it's gotten a little bit warmer in there but it's not going outside so i don't know it could smoke up a lot of stuff i might be wrong about that but i i didn't see anything when they were hooking it up when they changed out my um microwave a couple of years ago burn baby burn and one guy was saying like um you can't overdo this you know it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna just start turning into ash just because you left it on there too long um it still needs oxygen <clears throat> so no matter how long you burn this you know as long as you don't open it up right away it should still make char cloth and we're gonna kind of find out because I, um, let me see if I can ignite that. There's not much of a stream coming out. It may be done already, but. Yeah, I think it's done, but I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna give it another minute or two just to make sure. Get that sucker up to temperature. <clears throat> let me use my little Olight i5R EOS. I like the, the full hand size ones and uh, my only 
thought is that since it's doing two light modes, it'd be nice if it did three. Because, I mean, you get, you got low light, which is alright. I use that most of the time. But then the next one is, bam! You know? Well, I, anyway, they're cool. I like it. I still carry my little baton three also. <clears throat> the good thing about this is you can clip it up somewhere and turn it on. Have a little spotlight. Mood lighting. I think this thing's done. That's what I was pulling the lights out for was to see if there's any smoke coming out of that. So I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to end this char operation. If it doesn't come out right, well, you know what happened is I removed it too soon, but I, the, the flame was getting smaller, like the candle, you know, flame was getting smaller. Before our, I should have recorded that sound, man, because it changed from just like a, you know, the normal sound of gas coming out, like, psh, to all of a sudden, psh, you know, like, what the hell? And so I reached in, and it would regulate. It allowed me to regulate it. You know, I was turning it down. And I went, nee, because when I, my hand reached into the drill, I went, wow, this is hot underneath here. And then I'm thinking, pressurized container, hot under here. <laughs> What's next? Explosion. So, yeah, maybe I was being overly cautious, but oh, wait a minute. We, I think we are getting some smoke. I put my lights up and I still need them. No? I don't see any. Alright. So I'm going to turn that off. And we'll let it cool off and see what we get. Alright, here comes the moment of truth. Try to pry this thing out. You can see where it got <laughs> pretty toasty in there. Yeah, the next time I'll just I'll just do it the whole way with the alcohol stove. All right, there you go, there you go, baby. That's what we want to see. Now I'm gonna sacrifice one of them without building a complete fire. I got my little pocket bellows here, but uh, the top ones were. Uh, the stuff that it provided and the bottom down here. Oh, yeah, it is. It is very delicate and ashy So this is a gun cleaning patch right up here Now they say a lot of times you should fold it To get a little bit better surface area for the stuff to catch and and frizz it a little bit uh Oh, it falls apart easily so I don't know how good we're going to do on the frizzy part. All right, and then you place it. Let me get all my other char cloth covered up because this stuff is combustible. All right, then you place it on top of the flint. And you get your striker. And if, you're, if you've been a good boy, wait a minute, let me put the charred ends towards there. If you've been a good boy, you'll get a spark. I may have to change the angle of the uh, camera. Put it in wide angle. Oh, I got a spark, but it didn't land on it. Oh, get out of the way. Things will be sacrificed. Let me get over here. Put it in a different section. I might have more spark potential. Well, ooh, I had spark. Didn't catch. Ooh, ooh. See? See, just one little spark. That's all it takes. One little spark. And then you fold this over. And you blow on it. I got a smoke detector over here. Ow, 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 ow. This shit's hot. So there you go. I'd say that's successful. 
See if I can put this out without setting the whole place on fire in a smoke detector. It's still salvaging it. So there you go. Spark it Sunday. You got to use flint and steel. <laughs> you can use whatever you want if you want. As long as you can spark it up with a flint and steel. So there you go. There's my little Daniel Boone method. Hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, if I can do it, you can do it. So you learn from my mistakes. Let's, let's sum them up. Watch your fuel source. Watch your ventilation. It's best to be done outdoors, but if you do it indoors, take extra precautions. Um, be ready when it comes off. It's going to be hot, or you're going to have to remove it from the thing before you turn the fire off. So I used fat wood tongs. You also, I also had gloves, you know, because this, this sucker does get hot. But yeah, that's pretty cool. That's fun. So it's something you can do. I'm, I'm in an apartment. Uh, if I wouldn't have had the uh, balcony, I mean, if I wouldn't have had the fireplace, I would have gone out on the balcony and done it. But it's cold out there. It's cold. So there. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Have fun and fire one up. Thank you for watching.